Individualist anarchism in the United States was strongly influenced by Josiah Warren, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Lysander Spooner, Pierre Joseph Proudhon, Max Stirner, Herbert Spencer, and Henry David Thoreau. Other important individualist anarchists in the United States were Stephen Pearl Andrews, William Batchelder Green, Ezra Haywood, M. E. Lazarus, John Beverly Robinson, James L. Walker, Joseph Labadee, Stephen Byington, and Lawrence Labadee. The first American anarchist publication was The Peaceful Revolutionist, edited by Josiah Warren, whose earliest experiments and writings predate Pierre Joseph Proudhon. Overview For American anarchist historian Eunice Manette Schuster, American individualist anarchism stresses the isolation of the individual, his right to his own tools, his mind, his body, and to the products of his labor. To the artist who embraces this philosophy it is aesthetic anarchism, to the reformer, ethical anarchism, to the independent mechanic, economic anarchism. The former is concerned with philosophy, the latter with practical demonstration. The economic anarchist is concerned with constructing a society on the basis of anarchism. Economically he sees no harm whatsoever in the private possession of what the individual produces by his own labor, but only so much and no more. The aesthetic and ethical type found expression in the transcendentalism, humanitarianism, and romanticism of the first part of the 19th century, the economic type in the pioneer life of the West during the same period, but more favorably after the Civil War. Contemporary individualist anarchist Kevin Carson characterizes American individualist anarchism saying, Unlike the rest of the socialist movement, the individualist anarchists believed that the natural wage of labor in a free market was its product, and that economic exploitation could only take place when capitalists and landlords harnessed the power of the state in their interests. Thus, individualist anarchism was an alternative both to the increasing statism of the mainstream socialist movement, and to a classical liberal movement that was moving toward a mere apologetic for the power of big business. It is for this reason that it has been suggested that in order to understand American individualist anarchism one must take into account the social context of their ideas, namely the transformation of America from a pre capitalist to a capitalist society. The non-capitalist nature of the early U.S. can be seen from the early dominance of self-employment artisan and peasant production. At the beginning of the 19th century, around 80% of the working male population were self-employed. The great majority of Americans during this time were farmers working their own land, primarily for their own needs. And so, individualist anarchism is clearly a form of artisanal socialism while communist anarchism and anarcho-syndicalism are forms of industrial or proletarian socialism. Historian Wendy McElroy reports that American individualist anarchism received an important influence of three European thinkers. One of the most important of these influences was the French political philosopher Pierre-Joseph Proudhon whose words, Liberty is not the daughter but the mother of order, appeared as a motto on liberty's masthead. Influential individualist anarchist publication of Benjamin Tucker. Another major foreign influence was the German philosopher Max Stirner. The third foreign thinker with great impact was the British philosopher Herbert Spencer. Other influences to consider include William Godwin's anarchism, which exerted an ideological influence on some of this, but more so the socialism of Robert Owen and Charles Fourier. After success of his British venture, Owen himself established a cooperative community within the United States at New Harmony, Indiana during 1825. One member of this commune was Josiah Warren considered to be the first individualist anarchist. After New Harmony failed Warren shifted his ideological loyalties from socialism to anarchism which was no great leap, given that Owen's socialism had been predicated on Godwin's anarchism. According to historian James J. Martin, the individualist anarchists and their support for the labor theory of value made their form of American mutualism a free market alternative to both capitalism and Marxism. 
Origins Josiah Warren Josiah Warren is widely regarded as the first American anarchist and the four-page weekly paper he edited during 1833, The Peaceful Revolutionist, was the first anarchist periodical published, an enterprise for which he built his own printing press, cast his own type and made his own printing plates. Warren was a follower of Robert Owen and joined Owen's community at New Harmony, Indiana. Josiah Warren termed the phrase, "...cost the limit of price," with "...cost." here referring not to monetary price paid but the labor one exerted to produce an item. Therefore, H.E. proposed a system to pay people with certificates indicating how many hours of work they did. They could exchange the notes at local time stores for goods that took the same amount of time to produce." He put his theories to the test by establishing an experimental, "...labor for labor store." called the Cincinnati Time Store where trade was facilitated by notes backed by a promise to perform labor. The store proved successful and operated for three years, after which it was closed so that Warren could pursue establishing colonies based on mutualism. These included Utopia and Modern Times. Warren said that Stephen Pearl Andrews' The Science of Society, published in 1852, was the most lucid and complete exposition of Warren's own theories. Catalan historian Xavier Diaz reports that the intentional communal experiments pioneered by Warren were influential in European individualist anarchists of the late 19th and early 20th centuries such as Émile Armand and the intentional communities started by them. <laughs> Henry David Thoreau The American version of individualist anarchism has a strong emphasis on the non-aggression principle and individual sovereignty. Some individualist anarchists, such as Henry David Thoreau, do not speak of economics but simply the right of «disunion» from the state, and foresee the gradual elimination of the state through social evolution. Civil disobedience resistance to civil government is an essay by Henry David Thoreau that was first published in 1849. It argues that people should not permit governments to overrule or atrophy their consciences, and that people have a duty to avoid allowing such acquiescence to enable the government to make them the agents of injustice. Thoreau was motivated in part by his disgust with slavery and the Mexican-American War. It would influence Mohandas Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Martin Buber and Leo Tolstoy through its advocacy of nonviolent resistance. It is also the main precedent for anarcho pacifism. Anarchism started to have an ecological view mainly in the writings of American individualist anarchist and transcendentalist Thoreau. In his book Walden, he advocates simple living and self sufficiency among natural surroundings in resistance to the advancement of industrial civilization. Many have seen in Thoreau one of the precursors of ecologism and anarcho primitivism represented today in John Zerzan. For George Woodcock this attitude can be also motivated by certain idea of resistance to progress and of rejection of the growing materialism which is the nature of American society in the mid-19th century." John Zerzan himself included the text, "'Excursions' 1863 by Thoreau in his edited compilation of anti-civilization writings called Against Civilization, Readings and Reflections from 1999. Walden made Thoreau influential in the European individualist anarchist green current of anarcho-naturism. <inaudible> <inaudible> William Batchelder Green William Batchelder Green was a 19th-century mutualist individualist anarchist, Unitarian minister, soldier and promoter of free banking in the United States. Green is best known for the works Mutual Banking 1850, which proposed an interest-free banking system, and Transcendentalism, a critique of the New England philosophical school. For American anarchist historian Eunice Manette Schuster, "...it is apparent that Proudhonian anarchism was to be found in the United States at least as early as 1848 and that it was not conscious of its affinity to the individualist anarchism of Josiah Warren and Stephen Pearl Andrews." William B. Green presented this Proudhonian mutualism in its purest and most systematic form." After 1850 he became active in labor reform. 
He was elected vice president of the New England Labor Reform League, the majority of the members holding to Proudhon's scheme of mutual banking, and in 1869 president of the Massachusetts Labor Union. He then publishes Socialistic, Mutualistic, and Financial Fragments 1875. He saw mutualism as the synthesis of liberty and order. His associationism is checked by individualism. Mind your own business. Quote, quote, judge not that ye be not judged. Over matters which are purely personal, as for example, moral conduct, the individual is sovereign, as well as over that which he himself produces. For this reason he demands mutuality. In marriage, the equal right of a woman to her own personal freedom and property. Topic. Stephen Pearl Andrews Stephen Pearl Andrews was an individualist anarchist and close associate of Josiah Warren. Andrews was formerly associated with the Forerist movement, but converted to radical individualism after becoming acquainted with the work of Warren. Like Warren, he held the principle of individual sovereignty as being of paramount importance. Andrews said that when individuals act in their own self-interest, they incidentally contribute to the well-being of others. He maintained that it is a mistake to create a state, church or public morality that individuals must serve rather than pursuing their own happiness. In love, marriage and divorce, and the sovereignty of the individual he says, give up the search after the remedy for the evils of government in more government. The road lies just the other way, toward individualism and freedom from all government. Nature made individuals, not nations, and while nations exist at all, the liberties of the individual must perish. Contemporary American anarchist Hakeem Bey reports, Stephen Pearl Andrews, was not a forerist see Charles Fourier, but he lived through the brief craze for philanstries in America and adopted a lot of forerist principles and practices, a maker of worlds out of words. He syncretized abolitionism, free love, spiritual universalism, Josiah Warren, and Fourier into a grand utopian scheme he called the Universal Pantarchy. He was instrumental in founding several intentional communities, including the Brownstone Utopia on 14th Street in New York, and Modern Times in Brentwood, Long Island. The latter became as famous as the best-known forest communes Brook Farm in Massachusetts and the North American Phalanx in New Jersey in fact, modern times became downright notorious for free love and finally foundered under a wave of scandalous publicity. Andrews and Victoria Woodhull were members of the infamous Section 12 of the First International, expelled by Marx for its anarchist, feminist, and spiritualist tendencies. Topic free love An important current within American individualist anarchism is free love. Free love advocates sometimes traced their roots back to Josiah Warren and to experimental communities, viewed sexual freedom as a clear, direct expression of an individual's self-ownership. Free love particularly stressed women's rights since most sexual laws discriminated against women, for example, marriage laws and anti-birth control measures. The most important American free love journal was Lucifer the Lightbearer (1883–1907), edited by Moses Harmon and Lois Weisbrooker, but also there existed Ezra Haywood and Angela Haywood's The Word (1872–1890, 1892–1893). M. E. Lazarus was an important American individualist anarchist who promoted free love. Hutchins Hapgood was a U.S. journalist, author, individualist anarchist, philosophical anarchist who was well known within the bohemian environment of around the start of the 20th century New York City. He advocated free love and committed adultery frequently. Hapgood was a follower of the German philosophers Max Stirner and Friedrich Nietzsche. Topic Lucifer the Lightbearer According to Harmon, the mission of Lucifer the Lightbearer was to help woman to break the chains that for ages have bound her to the rack of man-made law, spiritual, economic, industrial, social and especially sexual, believing that until woman is roused to a sense of her own responsibility on all lines of human endeavor, and especially on lines of her special field, that of reproduction of the race, there will be little if any real advancement toward a higher and truer civilization. The name was chosen because Lucifer, the ancient name of the morning star, now called Venus, seems to us unsurpassed as a cognomen for a journal whose mission is to bring light to the dwellers in darkness. In February 1887, the editors and publishers of Lucifer were arrested after the journal ran afoul of the Comstock Act for the publication of a letter condemning forced sex within marriage, which the author identified as rape. 
The Comstock Act specifically prohibited the discussion of marital rape. A Topeka district attorney eventually handed down 216 indictments. In February 1890, Harmon, now the sole producer of Lucifer, was again arrested on charges resulting from a similar article written by a New York physician. As a result of the original charges, Harmon would spend large portions of the next six years in prison. In 1896, Lucifer was moved to Chicago, but legal harassment continued. The United States Postal Service—then known as the United States Post Office Department— seized and destroyed numerous issues of the journal and, in May 1905, Harmon was again arrested and convicted for the distribution of two articles, The Fatherhood Question, and More Thoughts on Sexology, by Sarah Christ Campbell. Sentenced to a year of hard labor, the 75-year-old editor's health deteriorated greatly. After 24 years in production, Lucifer ceased publication in 1907 and became the more scholarly American Journal of Eugenics. They also had many opponents, and Moses Harmon spent two years in jail after a court determined that a journal he published was obscene under the notorious Comstock Law. In particular, the court objected to three letters to the editor, one of which described the plight of a woman who had been raped by her husband, tearing stitches from a recent operation after a difficult childbirth and causing severe hemorrhaging. The letter lamented the woman's lack of legal recourse. Ezra Haywood, who had already been prosecuted under the Comstock Law for a pamphlet attacking marriage, reprinted the letter in solidarity with Harmon and was also arrested and sentenced to two years in prison. <laughs> Ezra Haywood Ezra Haywood's philosophy was instrumental in furthering individualist anarchist ideas through his extensive pamphleteering and reprinting of works of Josiah Warren, author of True Civilization 1869, and William B. Green. In 1872, at a convention of the New England Labor Reform League in Boston, Haywood introduced Green and Warren to eventual Liberty publisher Benjamin Tucker. Haywood saw what he believed to be a disproportionate concentration of capital in the hands of a few as the result of a selective extension of government-backed privileges to certain individuals and organizations. The Word The Word was an individualist anarchist free love magazine edited by Ezra Haywood and Angela Haywoods from 1872 to 1890, 1892 to 1893, issued first from Princeton and then from Cambridge, Massachusetts. The Word was subtitled, A Monthly Journal of Reform, and it included contributions from Josiah Warren, Benjamin Tucker and J.K. Ingalls. Initially, the word presented free love as a minor theme which was expressed within a labor reform format, but the publication later evolved into an explicitly free love periodical. At some point Tucker became an important contributor but later became dissatisfied with the journal's focus on free love since he desired a concentration on economics. In contrast, Tucker's relationship with Haywood grew more distant. Yet, when Haywood was imprisoned for his pro-birth control stand from August to December 1878 under the Comstock laws, Tucker abandoned the Radical Review in order to assume editorship of Haywood's The Word. After Haywood's release from prison, The Word openly became a free love journal, it flouted the law by printing birth control material and openly discussing sexual matters. Tucker's disapproval of this policy stemmed from his conviction that L. Iberty, to be effective, must find its first application in the realm of economics. M. E. Lazarus M. E. Lazarus February 6, 1822, or 1896, was an American individualist anarchist from Guntersville, Al. He is the author of several essays and anarchist pamphlets including Land Tenure, Anarchist View 1889. A famous quote from Lazarus is, "...every vote for a governing office is an instrument for enslaving me." Lazarus was also an intellectual contributor to Fourierism and the free love movement of the 1850s, a social reform group that called for, in its extreme form, the abolition of institutionalized marriage. In Lazarus' 1852 essay, Love vs. Marriage, he argued that marriage as an institution was akin to legalized prostitution, oppressing women and men by allowing loveless marriages contracted for economic or utilitarian reasons to take precedence over true love. Freethought 
Freethought as a philosophical position and as activism was important in North American individualist anarchism. In the United States, Freethought was a basically anti-Christian, anti-clerical movement, whose purpose was to make the individual politically and spiritually free to decide for himself on religious matters. A number of contributors to liberty were prominent figures in both Freethought and anarchism. The individualist anarchist George MacDonald was a co-editor of Freethought and, for a time, the truth seeker, E. C. Walker was co-editor of the excellent Freethought, Free Love journal Lucifer, the Light Bearer. Many of the anarchists were ardent freethinkers, reprints from Freethought papers such as Lucifer, the Light Bearer, Freethought and the Truth Seeker appeared in Liberty. The Church was viewed as a common ally of the state and as a repressive force in and of itself. The Boston Anarchists Another form of individualist anarchism was found in the United States as advocated by the Boston Anarchists. By default, American individualists had no difficulty accepting the concepts that one man employ another are that he direct him in his labor but rather demanded that all natural opportunities requisite to the production of wealth be accessible to all on equal terms and that monopolies arising from special privileges created by law be abolished they believed state monopoly capitalism defined as a state sponsored monopoly prevented labor from being fully rewarded voltairine de Clare, summed up the philosophy by saying that the anarchist individualists are firm in the idea that the system of employer and employed, buying and selling, banking, and all the other essential institutions of commercialism, centered upon private property, are in themselves good, and are rendered vicious merely by the interference of the state." Even among the 19th-century American individualists, there was not a monolithic doctrine, as they disagreed amongst each other on various issues including intellectual property rights and possession versus property in land. A major schism occurred later in the 19th century when Tucker and some others abandoned their traditional support of natural rights, as espoused by Lysander Spooner, and converted to an egoism, modeled upon Stirner's philosophy. Lysander Spooner besides his individualist anarchist activism was also an important anti-slavery activist and became a member of the First International. Some Boston anarchists including Benjamin Tucker, identified themselves as socialists, which in the 19th century was often used in the sense of a commitment to improving conditions of the working class i.e., the labor problem. The Boston anarchists, such as Tucker and his followers are considered socialists due to their opposition to usury. This is because as the modern economist Jim Stanford states there are many different kinds of competitive markets such as market socialism and capitalism as only one type of a market economy. By around the start of the 20th century, the heyday of individualist anarchism had passed. Topic: <laughs> Liberty 1881 to 1908. Liberty was a 19th-century anarchist periodical published in the United States by Benjamin Tucker, from August 1881 to April 1908. The periodical was instrumental in developing and formalizing the individualist anarchist philosophy through publishing essays and serving as a format for debate. Contributors included Benjamin Tucker, Lysander Spooner, Auburn Herbert, Dyer Lum, Joshua K. Ingalls, John Henry McKay, Victor Yarrows, Wordsworth Donisthorpe, James L. Walker, J. William Lloyd, Florence Finch Kelly, Voltairine de Clare, Stephen T. Byington, John Beverly Robinson, Joe Labadee, Lillian Harmon, and Henry Appleton. Included in its masthead is a quote from Pierre Proudhon saying that liberty is, not the daughter but the mother of order. Topic. American individualist anarchism and the labor movement George Woodcock reports that the American individualist anarchists Lysander Spooner and William B. Green had been members of the socialist First International Tuo individualist anarchists who wrote in Benjamin Tucker's Liberty were also important labor organizers of the time. Joseph Labadee April 18, 1850 to October 7, 1933, was an American labor organizer, individualist anarchist, social activist, printer, publisher, essayist, and poet. In 1883 Labadee embraced individualist anarchism, a nonviolent doctrine. 
He became closely allied with Benjamin Tucker, the country's foremost exponent of that doctrine, and frequently wrote for the latter's publication, Liberty. Without the oppression of the state, Labadee believed, humans would choose to harmonize with the great natural laws without robbing their fellows through interest, profit, rent and taxes. However, he supported community cooperation, as he supported community control of water utilities, streets, and railroads. Although he did not support the militant anarchism of the Haymarket anarchists, he fought for the clemency of the accused because he did not believe they were the perpetrators. In 1888, Labadee organized the Michigan Federation of Labor, became its first president, and forged an alliance with Samuel Gompers. Dyer Lum was a 19th-century American individualist anarchist labor activist and poet. A leading anarcho-syndicalist and a prominent left-wing intellectual of the 1880s, he is remembered as the lover and mentor of early anarcha-feminist Voltairine de Clare. Lum was a prolific writer who wrote a number of key anarchist texts, and contributed to publications including Mother Earth, 20th Century, Liberty Benjamin Tucker's Individualist Anarchist Journal, The Alarm the Journal of the International Working People's Association and The Open Court among others. Lum's political philosophy was a fusion of individualist anarchist economics, a radicalized form of laissez-faire economics, inspired by the Boston anarchists, with radical labor organizations similar to that of the Chicago anarchists of the time, Herbert Spencer and Pierre Joseph Proudhon influenced Lum strongly in his individualist tendency. He developed a mutualist theory of unions and as such was active within the Knights of Labor and later promoted anti political strategies in the American Federation of Labor. Frustration with abolitionism, spiritualism, and labor reform caused Lum to embrace anarchism and radicalize workers as he came to believe that revolution would inevitably involve a violent struggle between the working class and the employing class. Convinced of the necessity of violence to enact social change he volunteered to fight in the American Civil War, hoping thereby to bring about the end of slavery. Kevin Carson has praised Lum's fusion of individualist laissez-faire economics with radical labor activism as creative, and described him as more significant than any in the Boston group. American egoism Some of the American individualist anarchists later in this era, such as Benjamin Tucker, abandoned natural rights positions and converted to Max Stirner's egoist anarchism. Rejecting the idea of moral rights, Tucker said that there were only two rights the right of might, and the right of contract. He also said, after converting to egoist individualism, in times past, it was my habit to talk glibly of the right of man to land. It was a bad habit, and I long ago sloughed it off. Man's only right to land is his might over it. In adopting Sternright Egoism 1886, Tucker rejected natural rights which had long been considered the foundation of libertarianism. This rejection galvanized the movement into fierce debates, with the natural rights proponents accusing the egoists of destroying libertarianism itself. So bitter was the conflict that a number of natural rights proponents withdrew from the pages of liberty in protest even though they had hitherto been among its frequent contributors. Thereafter, Liberty championed egoism although its general content did not change significantly. Several periodicals were undoubtedly influenced by Liberty's presentation of egoism. They included, I published by C.L. Swartz, edited by W.E. Gordak and J.W. Lloyd, all associates of Liberty, The Ego and the Egoist, both of which were edited by Edward H. Fulton. Among the egoist papers that Tucker followed were the German Der Eigene, edited by Adolf Brand, and The Eagle and the Serpent, issued from London. The latter, the most prominent English-language egoist journal, was published from 1898 to 1900 with the subtitle A Journal of Egoistic Philosophy and Sociology. Among those American anarchists who adhered to egoism include Benjamin Tucker, John Beverly Robinson, Stephen T. Byington, Hutchins Hapgood, James L. Walker, Victor Yarrows and E. H. Fulton. John Beverly Robinson wrote an essay called, Egoism, in which he states that, Modern egoism, as propounded by Stirner and Nietzsche, and expounded by Ibsen, Shaw and others, is all these, but it is more. It is the realization by the individual that they are an individual, that, as far as they are concerned, they are the only individual. 
Stephen T. Byington was a one-time proponent of Georgism who later converted to egoist sternerist positions after associating with Benjamin Tucker. He is known for translating two important anarchist works into English from German, Max Stirner's The Ego and Its Own and Paul Eltzbacher's Anarchism, Exponents of the Anarchist Philosophy also published by Dover with the title The Great Anarchists, Ideas and Teachings of Seven Major Thinkers. <laughs> James L. Walker and the Philosophy of Egoism James L. Walker sometimes known by the pen name Talk K -A -K, was one of the main contributors to Benjamin Tucker's Liberty. He published his major philosophical work called Philosophy of Egoism in the May 1890 to September 1891 in issues of the publication Egoism. James L. Walker published the work The Philosophy of Egoism in which he argued that egoism implies a rethinking of the self-other relationship, nothing less than a complete revolution in the relations of mankind that avoids both the archist principle that legitimates domination and the moralist notion that elevates self-renunciation to a virtue. Walker describes himself as an egoistic anarchist who believed in both contract and cooperation as practical principles to guide everyday interactions. For Walker the egoist rejects notions of duty and is indifferent to the hardships of the oppressed whose consent to their oppression enslaves not only them, but those who do not consent. The egoist comes to self-consciousness, not for the god's sake, not for humanity's sake, but for his or her own sake. For him, cooperation and reciprocity are possible only among those who are unwilling to appeal to fixed patterns of justice in human relationships and instead focus on a form of reciprocity, a union of egoists, in which person each finds pleasure and fulfillment in doing things for others." Walker thought that, "...what really defines egoism is not mere self-interest, pleasure, or greed, it is the sovereignty of the individual, the full expression of the subjectivity of the individual ego." <inaudible> Influence of Friedrich Nietzsche Nietzsche and Stirner were frequently compared by French literary anarchists, and anarchist interpretations of Nietzschean ideas appear to have also been influential in the United States. One researcher notes, "...indeed, translations of Nietzsche's writings in the United States very likely appeared first in Liberty, the anarchist journal edited by Benjamin Tucker." He adds, "...Tucker preferred the strategy of exploiting his writings, but proceeding with due caution, Nietzsche says splendid things, often, indeed, anarchist things, but he is no anarchist. It is of the anarchists, then, to intellectually exploit this would-be exploiter." He may be utilized profitably, but not profitably. Topic: <inaudible> Italian American individualist anarchism. Italian anti-organizationalist individualist anarchism was brought to the United States by Italian-born individualists such as Giuseppe Shankabilla and others who advocated for violent propaganda by the deed there. Anarchist historian George Woodcock reports the incident in which the important Italian social anarchist Errico Malatesta became involved in a dispute with the individualist anarchists of Patterson, who insisted that anarchism implied no organization at all, and that every man must act solely on his impulses. At last, in one noisy debate, the individual impulse of a certain Shankabilla directed him to shoot Malatesta, who was badly wounded but obstinately refused to name his assailant. Enrico Arrigoni Enrico Arrigoni pseudonym, Frank Brand was an Italian-American individualist anarchist lathe operator, house painter, bricklayer, dramatist and political activist influenced by the work of Max Stirner. He took the pseudonym, Brand, from a fictional character in one of Henrik Ibsen's plays. In the 1910s he started becoming involved in anarchist and anti-war activism around Milan. From the 1910s until the 1920s he participated in anarchist activities and popular uprisings in various countries including Switzerland, Germany, Hungary, Argentina and Cuba. He lived from the 1920s onwards in New York City and there he edited the individualist anarchist eclectic journal Arisia in 1928. 
He also wrote for other American anarchist publications such as El Adunata dei Refratari, Cultura Abrera, Controcorrent and Intesa Libertaria. During the Spanish Civil War, he went to fight with the anarchists but was imprisoned and was helped on his release by Emma Goldman. Afterwards Arigoni became a longtime member of the Libertarian Book Club in New York City. He died in New York City when he was 90 years old on December 7, 1986. Topic Since 1945 Murray Bookchin has identified post-left anarchy as a form of individualist anarchism in social anarchism or lifestyle anarchism, an unbridgeable chasm where he says he identifies a shift among Euro-American anarchists away from social anarchism and toward individualist or lifestyle anarchism. Indeed, lifestyle anarchism today is finding its principal expression in spray can graffiti, postmodernist nihilism, antirationalism, neoprimitivism, anti-technologism, neo-situationist cultural terrorism, mysticism, and a practice of staging Foucauldian personal insurrections. Post-left anarchist Bob Black in his long critique of Bookchin's philosophy called Anarchy After Leftism said about post-left anarchy that it is, unlike Bookchinism, individualistic in the sense that if the freedom and happiness of the individual, i.e., each and every really existing person, every Tom, Dick and Murray, is not the measure of the good society, what is, a strong relationship does exist with post-left anarchism and the work of individualist anarchist Max Stirner. Jason McQuinn says that when I and other anti-ideological anarchists criticize ideology, it is always from a specifically critical, anarchist perspective rooted in both the skeptical, individualist anarchist philosophy of Max Stirner. Also Bob Black and Farrell Fawn, Wolfie Landstreicher strongly adhere to Stirnerist egoist anarchism. Bob Black has humorously suggested the idea of Marxist Stirnerism. Hakim Bey has said from Stirner's Union of Self-Owning Ones, we proceed to Nietzsche's circle of free spirits and thence to Charles Fourier's Passional Series, doubling and redoubling ourselves even as the other multiplies itself in the eros of the group. Bey also wrote that the McKay Society, of which Mark and I are active members, is devoted to the anarchism of Max Stirner, Benj. Tucker and John Henry McKay. The McKay Society, incidentally, represents a little-known current of individualist thought which never cut its ties with revolutionary labor. Dyer Lum, Ezra and Angela Haywood represent this school of thought. Joe Labadee, who wrote for Tucker's Liberty, made himself a link between the American plumb line anarchists, the philosophical individualists, and the syndicalist or communist branch of the movement. His influence reached the McKay Society through his son, Lawrence. Like the Italian Sternerites who influenced us through our late friend Enrico Arrigoni we support all anti-authoritarian currents, despite their apparent contradictions. As far as posterior individualist anarchists, Jason McQuinn used for some time the pseudonym Lev Chernyi in honor of the Russian individualist anarchist of the same name while Farrell Fawn has quoted Italian individualist anarchist Renzo Novatore and has translated Novatore as well as the young Italian individualist anarchist Bruno Filippi. Egoism has had also a strong influence on insurrectionary anarchism as can be seen in the work of the American insurrectionist Wolfie Landstreicher. In 1995, Landstreicher writing as Farrell Fawn wrote, In the game of insurgents, a lived guerrilla war game, it is strategically necessary to use identities and roles. Unfortunately, the context of social relationships gives these roles and identities the power to define the individual who attempts to use them. So I, Farrell Fawn, became, an anarchist, a writer. A Stirner-influenced, post-situationist, anti-civilization theorist. If not in my own eyes, at least in the eyes of most people who read my writings. Left-wing market anarchism, a form of left libertarianism, individualist anarchism and libertarian socialism is associated with scholars such as Kevin Carson, Roderick T. Long, Charles Johnson, Brad Spangler, Samuel Edward Konkin III, Sheldon Richman, Chris Matthew Shabara and Gary Chartier, who stress the value of radically free markets, termed freed markets to distinguish them from the common conception which these libertarians believe to be riddled with statist and capitalist privileges. Referred to as left-wing market anarchists or market-oriented left libertarians, proponents of this approach strongly affirm the classical liberal ideas of self-ownership and free markets while maintaining that taken to their logical conclusions, these ideas support anti-capitalist, anti-corporatist, anti-hierarchical, pro-labor positions in economics, anti-imperialism in foreign policy, and thoroughly liberal or radical views regarding such cultural issues as gender, sexuality, and race. The genealogy of contemporary market-oriented left libertarianism—sometimes labeled left-wing market anarchism— 
overlaps to a significant degree with that of Steiner Valentine left libertarianism as the roots of that tradition are sketched in the book The Origins of Left Libertarianism. Carson Long style left libertarianism is rooted in 19th century mutualism and in the work of figures such as Thomas Hodgkin and the individualist anarchists Benjamin Tucker and Lysander Spooner. While with notable exceptions market-oriented libertarians after Tucker tended to ally with the political right, relationships between such libertarians and the new left thrived in the 1960s, laying the groundwork for modern left-wing market anarchism. Left-wing market anarchism identifies with left libertarianism or left-wing libertarianism which names several related but distinct approaches to politics, society, culture, and political and social theory, which stress both individual freedom and social justice. Unlike right libertarians, they believe that neither claiming nor mixing one's labor with natural resources is enough to generate full private property rights, and maintain that natural resources land, oil, gold, trees ought to be held in some egalitarian manner, either unowned or owned collectively. Those left libertarians who support private property do so under the condition that recompense is offered to the local community. See also. Anarchism in the United States Individualist anarchism in Europe Individualist anarchism in France Topic References Topic Further reading Brooks, Frank H. The Individualist Anarchists: An Anthology of Liberty 1881 to 1908 Transaction Publishers, New Brunswick, 1994. Chartier, Gary, Johnson, Charles W. 2011. Markets Not Capitalism, Individualist Anarchism Against Bosses, Inequality, Corporate Power, and Structural Poverty. Brooklyn, NY, Minor Compositions, Autonomedia. Men Against the State, The Expositors of Individualist Anarchism in America, 1827-1908 by James Joseph Martin. Native American Anarchism, A Study of Left-Wing American Individualism by Eunice Manette Schuster. Rocker, Rudolph. Pioneers of American Freedom, Origin of Liberal and Radical Thought in America. Rocker Publishing Committee, 1949. Netlau, Max Individualist Anarchism in the United States, England and Elsewhere. The Early American Libertarian Intellectuals. In Heiner M. Becker. A Short History of Anarchism. Freedom Press. ISBN 0-900384-89-1. OCLC 37529250